J-O-Y, join, join the Holy Ghost. J-O-Y, join, join in the war. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let nobody steal your joy. J-O-Y. My head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. My head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. My head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. God made them all. Your head, your shoulders, your knees, your toes. Your head, your shoulders, your knees, your toes. Your head, your shoulders, your knees, your toes. God made them all. Our heads, our shoulders, our knees, our toes. Our heads, our shoulders, our knees, our toes. Our heads, our shoulders, our knees, our toes. God made them all. Ain't no walk gonna stand in my place. As long as I'm alive to glorify his holy name. Ain't no walk. Gonna stand in my place as long as I'm alive to glorify his holy name. So I praise him, holy name, as long as I'm alive to glorify his holy name. So I praise him, holy name, as long as I'm alive to glorify his holy name. Ain't no board gonna sing in my place as long as I'm alive to glorify in holy name. Ain't no board gonna sing in my place as long as I'm alive to glorify in holy name. So I praise in holy name as long as I'm alive to glorify his holy name. So I praise him, holy name. And on the time I lie to glorify his holy name. If I were a butterfly, I would thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. If I were a fish in the sea, I would wiggle my tail and giggle with me. I just thank you, Lord, for me. Father, for making me, me. Jesus Christ, another Sunday service as we are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. And so because we are blessed and highly favored, we want to thank God for his great kindness and his mercy towards us. All our e-members, all our brethren friends those who are subscribing we thank you very much and so we want to thank god for this first sunday in july first sunday in july where we can say i will bless the lord at all times and his praise shall continue be in my mouth the humble shall hear thereof and be glad and somebody put something more come let us magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together and so we want to magnify the lord this day does anybody feel happy in the house we could just amen. give the lord a praise amen. amen and i believe that god have a word for us and we are going back into the same context of the subject matter what dwells in you the indwelling the indwelling something must dwells inside of mankind yes. and i'm saying mankind and if it's not a time that you can see with your eyes is now that something radically is manifesting all about in contrast to mankind Amen. and before we get deep into the holy writ we want to look to the lord in prayer I invite all the saints wherever you is just communicate and let's go together mm. and seek the face of the lord wherever mm. you are whether you are in jamaica trinidad guyana turks caicos africa european united states i can't find all the names that could call any members that you are in tune and gospel way to this day 
let's look to the Lord in prayer because we know that prayer can shake down Amen. the enemy. Mm. Prayer is a secret weapon that can destroy any force of darkness. Yes. All the Bible make it clear that we should cease not from praying one mm. for another. Yes. If it isn't a time that we should pray for our brothers, pray mm. for our sister, pray for our neighbor, pray for our friend, pray yes. for your cousin, pray for your auntie, pray for, pray for somebody today. Amen. As we look to the Lord in prayer, even now, Father, we want to thank you for this blessed thank day. You, you declare that this is a day that you have made, Amen. and we want to rejoice and be glad Praise in God. it. Thank and you. so, Holy God, we bless you for your word. Oh, oh we God. bless you for calling mm. us out of darkness. Yes. We bless you for rescuing out of the jurisdiction of mm. the power of Praise darkness. God. Hallelujah. We bless you for giving us this expectation mm. that one of these days, God, you will snatch your church out yes. of this terrestrial Amen. earth. And so today we shabak you, we told oh, praise Lord, you, we God. give you a telita praise. Most of all, Lord, we humble worship you Hallelujah. in spirit and in truth. We humble shabak you, mm. oh God. We humble exalt you above yes, all gods. Oh, we come to the conclusion God. that all the gods of the nations are idle. Mm. And because they are idol they have eyes to see but cannot mm. see they have ears but cannot hear so we bless you for your the god who hear our cry today thank you for hearing us this day thank lord, lord. Hallelujah. we humbly give you thanks and praise in the thank exalted you. name christ jesus thank our you. lord and our savior and our king oh, just put your hands together and just bless the lord hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. amen is that say amen 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 and so I, I want to run over into the book of Mark chapter 4. And I, we did look back the last time when we look at Mark there. We see from verse 30, 34, 34, 34, 34, 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I'm reading from the NIV, NIV, which means New International Version. And I'm going to touch the King James Version also that you could get some gems from it. Is it the word of God? So it's, it keep us edified. Verse 35 of Mark chapter 4. And it read like this. That day when evening came, he said to his disciple, let us go over to the other side. Over to the other side. Leaving the crowd. Because Christ is on a mission, so crowd always with him. And the Bible says, They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. This version said in verse 37, A ferocious qual. In other words, a sudden downpour of wind, hailstone, a, sin, a sudden rush uh -huh, of weather change. Ferocious squall came upon the waves, broke over to the boat, so that it was nearly sink. Nearly sink, according to the writer here. Jesus was in the stern sleeping and a cushion. The disciple woke him up and said to him, Teacher, maybe the next version say, Master, don't you care if we drown? Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care if we safe? Don't you care if we are okay? Because Christ was sleeping. Listen to this. I just got an email. Whether Christ is sleeping or Christ is awake, once Christ is present wherever you is, no squall, no storm can drown you. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, the Bible says, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There are also other boat. And ferocious squirrel came up on his wave and broke over the boat so that it was nearly swung 
are seen. And Jesus, they woke him up and said, Master, care is not we perish, care is not we draw. Hear this now. He got up. Look in verse 36. This is where we want to build before we go into um, chapter 5. He got up. Rebuke the wind. One. Two. Two. And said to the wave. Quiet. Be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm every one of us go through our wind every one of us go through our storm but you need a Christ Amen. to speak to rebuke your wind Amen. and to speak to your storm Amen. I'm going somewhere Remember, the subject is the indwelling Amen. spirit. Yes. What dwells within you? Now, the disciples, they have a serious matter here. Here we go now. He said to his disciple, Why are you so afraid? Personally, I could not run the disciples them what took them was a sudden squall sudden tidal wave you have nowhere to hold on to in water and so in this headquarters here at all given time we believe that we're going to drown if you're in the water and let assume wherever the location was. I know that some of these guys might can swim. But wherever they were, the tidal wave was so high and heavy that they could not swim to go back to land. Or swim to go to land. <laughs> and so the disciples, Jesus said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Oh In other words, where is your faith? I am here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I own the sea. I own the stars. I own the sky. I own the wind. The wind has to obey me. I, 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 why are you so afraid? The Bible says, they were terrified, according to NIV version. And asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind. The disciples, they were, were, were amazed. I've seen what happened with the voice of their commanding chief. You will go in along with Jesus. But certain miracle that should be take place, you are saying, no way, Lord, you can't handle this one. Let me try it myself. Yes. The disciples says they were terrified. Yes. Ask each other, who is this? Even the wind and the wave obey him. Amen. Let's look now and some of the point of matter that take place with the disciples. This would demonstrate that the Christ, the Son of the living God, mm. have the sovereign authority, yes. the sovereign ruler, the sovereign source, the sovereign power to speak to the power of the wind. Amen. Because don't forget the wind, you cannot see the wind. You only hear the wind. Yes. You see the tree. You will see the wave. All this is taking place. But guess what? You cannot see the wind itself. 
in that suggests that the wind is moving according to a spirit. The Messiah, the teacher, the master, the sovereign Lord, rebuke the wind. Look in your version. They said, verse 39 said, He got up and rebuked the wind. Come on, the wind to cease. The Bible says, The wind died down. Did you hear that word? The wind died down. Look what happened when he speak to the sea. Look. Then he speak to the wave. The wave in the sea. The wind caused the wave to be boisterous. The wind is the major component in the context. The wind. The spirit is a major component in mankind. Whether it's a spirit of stubbornness or the Holy Spirit, the major. And you see here, when he's Rebuke the wind, it died down. And then what happened? He speak to the wave. The wind died down and the wave calm. He says to the wave, quiet. Can we do a, a spiritual step back? Humanistic now. Christ, why didn't you speak to the wind? Christ, the wind is a major operator here. So he got to rebuke the wind, command the wind. And then he speaks. To the wave and said to the wave, quiet. Then the wind died down and the wave was completely calm. So we find that this demonstrates the sovereign authority of Christ Jesus. The strength of his disciples were totally helpless. The disciples in this context, they were helpless. Look at how they're helpless. They rushed to the master. They did not try nothing in reference to the scripture. They, let's say we are believers. They did not even pray. They rushed and wake up Christ. And say, you know, Kira, if we jump. They were helpless. Their strength was gone. Their faith was on vacation. They rushed to the Messiah and said, Master, teacher, you don't care about us? Jesus did not respond to them. He responded to the wind and the wave. Yes. And then he spoke to them. And he said to his disciples, verse 40, Why are you so afraid? They are walking with the life giver. They are walking with the resurrector. They walk into the bread of life. They walk in with the source of life. They walk in with the power of life. They walk in with the 
absolute right over all things and they did not even have a clue. I am with you and you don't know who am I? Amen. Whom do men say I am? They were guessing. Mm -hmm. They could not find the answer. Peter alone rise up in Ma Matthew chapter 16 and says, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus says to Peter, flesh and blood did not tell you this, did not reveal to you. My heavenly Father give you the revelation. The disciples were helpless. They were with Christ but didn't have no faith. What are you saying, Pastor? Well, look. The matter of this time was a trial of their faith. It tests their conduct. It tests their behavior. It tests their faith in Christ. They were terrified because their faith were weak. Remember, I told you early on, I would do worse. Maybe I would try to jump off the sea if I could reach the land. That's the, that's the way of man thinking. We are quick to make the move because it's life versus John, our death, if you may. So at all given time, we are inclined to protect our life. And so the, 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 the faith were tested. The trial, they get tested. And listen what caused the test now. What is happening, it caused terrifying. It caused a wind of ferocious is coming. Remember, you have nothing to stop the wind. And guess what next? The boat were taking in water. The boat were about to sink. Let's look. The trial caused them to fear. God, the supreme Christ, if source, demonstrate his supernatural power. And as he demonstrate his supernatural power, then he turned to his disciple. In my word, where is your faith? I am with you. Why are you so terrified? Jesus now gave them the assurance. Rest. Peace. The trial demonstrate that Christ is a peacemaker in every one of us life. And as we see that this demonstrate the peace, he teaching them now that soon and very soon, I won't be here. Where will be your faith? Your faith must be the source of walking, the source of talking, the source of living. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must trust God with your faith. And as the storm come to its calm, when we look and the opening point, it was ferocious. This demonstrates severity. This demonstrates thunder and lightning, trembling, wind gushing. May we give it a number over 200 or 200 miles per hour? You are a dead man. The wind was raging. The gale force wind was so ferocious. Unable to control this. Every drops of rain falling like pellets. We are spiritualizing this based upon what the scripture said. 
And as we see that the storm was ferocious, or the temporal hurricane was ferocious, it caused the wave, the boat, to swear to get in danger. This leave them with no other choice, get this quick, but to run to their master, run to their teacher, and say, Kiris, hear what they say, Kiris, not we perish. Teacher, don't you care if we jump? That's a challenge to the teacher. And as the challenge faced them, going over the other side, we have a look now in chapter 5, where we see how ferocious this spiritual manifestation of the supernatural power of Christ will be demonstrated when ferocious demon of this young man remember I told you what dwells within you the indwelling what indwells within you let's go at chapter 5 and we find the Bible says and they came over unto the other side of the sea in the country of gatherings they reach over and as they reach over, verse 2 is very serious now. This is where the master proved more to his disciple. And when he came out of the ship, immediately, instantaneously, it's right here. They met him out of the tombs immediately they met him out of the tomb a man in other words this man have no name a man with an unclean spirit mean that this man is possessed is indwelling the residence of this man as an indwelling and clean spirit indwelling that means that spirit lives within him in his hand in his finger in his head in his eyes look immediately there met him instantaneously this ferocious unclean demon possessed man met him the bible is clear it says who has is indwelling is dwelling among the tomb his home aboard is amongst the tomb but i kept a email what would cause this man to live among the tomb is because of the indwelling of those demons because dead stay in tomb So they captivate him and let him be a resident into the tomb, into the cemetery. He is alive from the humanistic standpoint, but from the demon unclean standpoint, he is one of us. 
He lived with us. He eat with us. He walked with us. He talked with us. He is one of us. So we are honing him as our residence, as our dwelling place. Mm. You better careful who owns you. Amen. You better careful who you eat with, drink with, Amen. sleep with. Because you might drink and eat and sleep with, with a demon-possessed girl or a demon-possessed man. Amen. You can have a demon-possessed husband and you don't even know. You can have a demon possessed wife and you don't know. Mm. How you get that, Pastor? Because this man lives among the tomb. So he, he was easily to identify that he is possessed. But what happened to this husband that is possessed with an unclean spirit that sleep amongst his or her wife? Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going that route. Is our, our wife? Did you hear that? And because we have it, we have it, we have it. Did you understand my language? Yes. And so, therefore, you don't know who you sleep with. You can sleep in with a scorpion. You can sleep in with a Jezebel who is fully loaded and possessed. Amen. Check what is happening in the news. Mm. Can I run you to Ahab? Ahab was a Jew. Jezebel come from a far country. And Jezebel is the one who break out Ahab. Mm -hmm. Cause him to do wrong thing. Because Jezebel is so possessed yes. that Ahab asks uh, for a lot of land. Yes, yes, yes. And the man tell him no. And Ahab go home with his finger in his mouth crying. Turn his face to the wall. Jezebel come home and says, what's wrong with you, Jose? Yes. He says, I asked neighbor to sell me. <laughs> and like, uh, 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 you see what happened? Neighbor said no. Jezebel says, hey, darling, don't worry. I got this fix. I got this under control. Jezebel go organize a group of the worthless man of the city mm. and cause the death of Naboth. Yes. And remember this, my friend. Jezebel was fully possessed with greed. Amen. Yes, you have the spirit of greed. Amen. We'll take down young man, take down young woman, take down the ladies, whole age too. Because people were greedy, they are possessed Amen. with a spirit of gluttonousness, greediness, wantonness, last viciousness. They possess. My God. This man was living among the tomb. And the unclean spirit said, this is where we live. Amen. We live in the unclean zone. Yes. Get down your Bible, please. When a person is possessed, what you think he's going to do? Do what the demons tell you to do. The demons that possess a young man or a middle aged whatever age is, with a murderous spirit. What you think that spirit is going to do? Murder. A young woman, young man, young middle age that possess with a criminal spirit. Oh yes, a scamming spirit, yes. a robbery spirit. What you think he's going to do? I'm going to do mechanic, I'm going to do plumbing. No, they're going to rob, kill, and steal, and destroy. That's the spirit. So you was to careful what dwells within you, my brother, my sister, my friend. Careful, the same place, person that you sit on the plane with, you did not know that he was fully strapped with a bomb. The person who you travel on the train with, you don't know if he's a murderer with an AK-47 in his bag. You don't know. Click his channel. Hey, you don't know what is in that person. How comes you holding on to a murderous, unclean spirit? 
Praise the Lord. Who dwells among the tomb? And watch what happened. In verse 3, we are going to spend a lot of time on this subject. If you're just joining us, what dwells within you? The indwelling. The indwelling. Sheikosa. Careful what dwells within you. Because you can have a spirit of greed dwells within you. You want everything that your eyes see. Greed. Yes. Some people cannot satisfy with what they are earning. And so they're greedy. They're watching what the next person have. And all of a sudden, greed will turn you into gluttonousness. And from gluttonousness to murderous. Yes. Because if me can't get it, me I go kill him and take it or take it by force. Mm -hmm. mm. And remember, when, where one demon lives, a second and a third and a fourth is coming. Yes. Because that demon have a posse. Yes. All right. Let's take our time right here. Let's take our time right here. Yeah. And the Bible says, verse 3, and no man could bind him. Why? No man could bind him. Mm. Why? Because he possessed the supernatural and clean spirit. Yes. He possessed a loaded round of legions. Mm. Pause to say this. I will say it again. This young man with that AR K fifteen rifle. The young man is not the person, it's the spirit that drive him yes. to do the hack. This young man in King in Clarendon will slice those kids throat and the, his cousin throat. It's not the young man. It's the indwelling murder. Yes. God tell the DA and all the officers, the indwelling murder where dwells in him. And if more family members were at that house, he would kill them. Yes. And when that demon finished with him, that demon said, run away now. You, you the demon, what another demon assigned the one who said, run, run for your life, move on, go on to somewhere else. No man could burn him. Remember this. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, the wages of sin, the ration of sin is death, but the gift of God. Sin is a monster. Sin dictate to man. Yes. Sin rule man. Sin instruct man. Yes. Sin and death walk hands in hands. So the Bible said the wage, the ration, after you finish the wage of your act, death said, come, I'm ready. I'm right here. I'm waiting on you. Come. Mm. Ply! Shoot himself. That's how death and sin work. Sin and death work hands in hand. This young man could not be controlled. Why, pastor? Because of the supernatural power that this demon has him under control. The community scared. Yes. I could, my memory could serve me right. I wouldn't call such person name and national television i remember one community were under assault by a notorious outrageous dan in 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 in, in kingston yeah yes we could not control him i remember the minister declared land air and sea looking for that notorious guy in a vital community area. And you have to 
get from the community and the people are tired of him now. And all that could happen to that young man. Yeah, in dead. So I can't call his name. Yeah. Land, air, and sea take him out. Because when sin finish with you, death take you out. Back to the scripture. No man could bind him. No, not with chain. The uniqueness of these demons, they control the man. Don't come take our man from us. They tried chain, but chain could not control him. But the demons them control him, him. Because he was possessed, he was oppressed, he was perplexed by the force of demon. Chain could not hold him. The residents, the people that live in that zoning, they were terrified. They were under siege. Because the Bible said no one want to pass that zoning. He control that area. It's just like some youngster. I control this zoning. I control this area. Which area you control? It means that you are possessed with a demon or legions. Man, you own nothing. Here goes the word of God. No chain could not hold him. His environmental in that zoning is mine. That area is mine. The tombs them that the demon them have him in are in that area is mine. Listen what the Bible says. Listen, listen what the Bible says. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chain, and the chain had been blocked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Did you hear that? No man could tame him. No man could bring him under control. No man could subdue him because he was so outrageous. Back up in verse chapter 4. None of these disciples could subdue the wind. None of these disciples could subdue the wind. Nor speak to the wave and say quiet. None of the community members, pastors, evangelists, bishops, whoever type or family member could not subdue this man. He was outrageous. He was dangerous. He's harm to his teeth. He have the supernatural strength and power to destroy chain fetters. He broke them in pieces. Neither could any man stop him neither could any man tame him neither could any man flag him down no way i strongly believe even if they chain him and beat him the beating have no use to him if them even shackle him feet or break loose he was fully possessed and in no way they could control him. They could not tame him. His accountability is by him himself and those that are leading him. Have you ever seen a person who is ignorant? This is not the scripture now. Huh? Stubbornness. You can't bring such a stubborn person. That's why Paul says, The spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience, the spirit that worketh in this man, the spirits that worketh in this man, and clean spirit, foul spirit, demons possess spirit, killing spirit, cutting spirit, 
harmful spirit. You watch this man, he was cutting himself. And I strongly believe cutting himself, he don't even feel it. Verse 5, and always, watch this, always, mean is a continual act he's doing. Always is an a continuous operation. Night, night, which is darkness. Night, when people could go get rest. Night and day. He was in the mountain. Last time I said, why he's staying on the mountain? He can see. Because when, in verse 2, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately. Hear me now. Even when Jesus was on the sea, coming over to Gadarian, guess what? Those demons, those unclean spirits, seeing what taking place. They are up in the mountain. And when you are up and high, you can see all over. And so you know what the Bible said. And, and, and he, he, he always, night and day, he in the mountain and in the tombs, crying and crying. Thing that much up here he was on that total perplexity I don't know if it's pain because remember his flesh and what dwells in him is spirit of uncleanness and godliness spirit of last viciousness don't ask me this spirit was abusing the man Is feeling pain and discomfort, whatever way, shape, or fashion. I don't know what form you want to place it in, but he was under subjective pain, subdue in pain, perplexity pain, perplexity, stress, and heartache. He was under heavy delusion of pain. There was a systematized deception spirit that pressing him. Or sit here in the mountain and in the tomb crying. If you are not feeling pain and discomfort and sorrow and sadness or whatever form, shape or fashion, what are you crying for? Something must be happening to the man himself. We already know that the spirit inside of him dwell it in him that is the spirit house that's where they live that's where their home is they they operate inside of him i cannot give you no more explanation but why was he crying continuously all cry must have kept people away from that era. I don't know the vice of the crime. Do an analyzing for yourself. Cutting. Crying. And cutting himself with stone. We could pause dear, And we'll pick it up the next time. The discomfort of this cutting can be one the oppressiveness of these unclean spirit can be two hungry and thirst for a life of living can be three whatever way you want to dissect it His mind has been hampered, cannot think straight. He was bruised. He was trampled on. 
He was oppressed with legions and demons. He was hurt because his mind has been captivated, captivated by the unclean spirit. I am into a high voltage now. Imagine what kind of water this man drink. What kind of food this man eat. Can I go deep? What kind of sleep he get? Shit. Is totally incapacitated from a humanistic standpoint because this man is not his own. He's held captive by unclean spirit, held him at ransom, held him at their subjection. He cannot go backward without the demon go. He cannot go forward. He cannot. Nothing this man can do for himself he is under the auspices and rulership and authorization of the adversary, which led by the unclean spirit. Therefore, then, the indwelling in this man control the man. What dwells in you control you. What lives within you control you. Remember, the spirit that worked those unclean spirits will work it in him. Oh, sure. The unclean spirit, if the unclean spirit they are wrestling with their other spirit, it affect the man. He was fully loaded with unclean spirit. I have many more to say, but we'll take it up. In the next segment. May the God of heaven bless you. May the God of grace and mercy keep you. May the great God and Father protect you from the jurisdiction of the power of darkness. Because when unclean spirit take over your dwelling, you are not your own. You belong to the uncleanness. You belong to the prince of darkness. Yes. You belong to witchcraft spirit. Who do you do? Who do? Whatever such a spirit. Yes. If you make murderous spirit get inside of you, you're going to kill. Mm. So I submit to you this day yes. and pray for a spirit of wisdom, mm. knowledge, mm. and understanding yes. that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you'll be rooted and grounded and strong to grasp what is the breadth and the length and the height and the love of God that transcended all knowledge. You need a transformation mm. in spirit. Yes. In spirit. The Holy Spirit. You need a change. Yes. Young man, you need a change. Young woman, you yes. need a change. Adult, middle age, old age, you need a change. Today you hear this voice. Listen to what happened. The young man wasn't his own. He was under strong delusion, strong deception. God bless you today. Father, we thank you for your word. We bless you for what you have dispensed to your people. Thank you, God. As you use this vessel, I pray that you refill this clay that I can dispense more. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit continue to dwell within me. Mm. 
Let no false spirit come nigh our dwelling. This is your temple. In the name of Jesus. Pray for all the brethren, all the saints, and those who are listening to this voice. Lord, I pray that you hoover over some land, sea here, and rescue somebody. Lord, wherever your Holy Spirit be, pray that it reach a heart and rescue such a person from the jurisdiction of the power of darkness. You translate them into the Son of your love. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. As we bless your worthy name in the exalted name Christ Jesus, Jesus. our Lord and Savior. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. And I pray that you listen to this voice. You hear his voice. Stiffen not your heart. Harden not your heart. Listen to what Jesus' voice is saying. You hear this preacher, but listen for the voice of God speak to you. And so as you hear this word, please go and cash up if your heart desire. Remember if your heart desire. Mm -hmm. And whatever you're going to give to God, don't give it grudgingly. Yes. Don't give it murmur. Please keep it. If you're going to murmur to give to God, don't even think about it. But give with a willing heart. Mm -hmm. Go in uh, the book of 1 Corinthians 9. Give it willingly. God lover, cheerful giver. And you hear this voice. Go and gospel way. Dollar sign. Dollar sign. Gospel way church. One word. And ask your cousin, your auntie, your uncle, your friend. Have a friend. Tell them about the good news. Ask them to subscribe. God bless you. Now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forevermore. Amen and amen.